So you're simply the schoolhouse? Oh, yes. All oh, those kids know that when I bring the ponies down from the hills, I put a bit of a show on for them. Ah, nice kind of schooling. Can I help in any way? Why, thanks, Jack. You see, a lot of these kids are migrants from Europe. I tell them something about Australia, their new home, and uh, then I finish up with a few rodeo stunts. See you later, Jack. Go on. the United Nations this morning, eh? Yeah! <laughs> now, where's my little friend from Paris? Yes, we love it, sir. Oh, here he is. Good. Italy. Si, senor. Germany. It's been here. Spain. Good, then you're all here. <laughs> I say, uh, who wants to have a look at my scrapbook? Me! All right, then. Gather around here. Now, do you know that your new home is almost as big as the United States of America? I've been to most places, but there are some parts where no white man has ever trod. These are the tracks of my journeys at first droving cattle and later with a rodeo. Who can tell me which is, or which animal is the most friendly in Australia? The teddy bear. That's right. <laughs> of course, uh, we call the um, teddy bear the koala bear. He's a little fellow that uh, can only live on certain kinds of gum tree leaves. I'll tell you a story about a little bear. One day, just for pleasure, when riding the trail On my favorite pony with a white mane and tail I spied a koala that seemed as in pain So I wheeled my horse round and drew hard on the rain One glance at the bear and the story I knew from the head of my saddle, the blanket I drew, and round the koala, the warm cloth I spread, till all you could see was a teddy bear's head. Koala bears hate to leave the sanctuary of their trees, and to find one hiding in the undergrowth is a sure sign that something is wrong. I didn't exactly know what was wrong, but I knew that it was important to get him as quickly as possible to a doctor who could give him some proper care and attention. A 
far away o'er oh, the mountain we galloped along and the bush birds were singing a thanksgiving song at the end of the trail were the kind folk who care and a nice cozy bed for a tired little Doctor was an old friend of mine and knew more about koala bears than anybody I know. Fortunately, he was in. He was pleased to see me too. And the bundle of misery in my arms and I were certainly relieved to see him. Well, I handed him over to the doctor who examined the little patient carefully, listened to his heartbeat, just as your doctor does when you get the flu or the mumps. Nothing wrong there. A broken leg? No, all well here. Toothache? Well, let's have a look. But his teeth seem to be all right. Ah, there's nothing really wrong with our little friend. He probably hadn't been getting enough of the right kind of gum leaves that koalas must have to keep healthy. The doctor offered to show me round his place and the funny little creatures living there. Oh, what bad manners. It is not please, mind you. Koala bears never have them. Fleas just can't stand the smell of gum trees. And koalas can't live anywhere but on gum trees, or eucalyptus, as they're called in other parts of the world. That's the reason why they can't survive anywhere else but in Australia, the home of the gum tree. The koala bears are exactly what they look like. Harmless, sweet-tempered, a little lazy, just like children. And just like children, they love eating, only more so. They may only eat one kind of food, but my word, they eat plenty of it. A little koala, which seldom weighs more than 18 pounds, eats about two and a half pounds of gum leaves a day. Well, you'd have to eat about 11 pounds of cabbage a day to equal that performance, wouldn't you? You'd think that so much food would make them thirsty. <laughs> and yet they never drink any liquid. Doctor tells me they just can't get it down. All they do is chew it. You just try and chew milk or water. <laughs> well, bye-bye, little fellas. Have lots of gum. So long, so long, so long, my little teddy bear. Ah, there she is, Curio of Maribel. You know, Australia's greatest rough riders have all tried to ride her and not one of them have ever stayed on her back. The moment she saw me, though, she gave me one big horse laugh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I got even with her in her wicked ways. I wrote a song about it. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Good, all right, now, Fritz, uh, hand me my guitar, will you? That's the lad. Try and bring it over here. Now, listen to this. Hear the shouts of the crowd at the big rodeo As out from the shoot box the wild curio It's a mighty big contest between a horse and man A cyclone let loose with the devilish plan Lay the lip That wild bugging outlaw, the lads know so well. To ride at ten seconds is sounding your knell. There's a hole in the ground where the last rider fell from Curio of Marabell. Come on, Miss Prince, try your hand at driving. Come along, children, back to school. <laughs> Riding in a land where I 